Hey, this is a video essay detailing my opinions of BFN, its future, and how PopCap's been handling the PVZ shooters so far. Uh, first off, I believe this is very much worth mentioning. PopCap has yet to address GW2's lack of support as of recent, uh, and what it implies. If you weren't already aware, GW2's Town Hall Mystery Portal was messed up, and it's got people concerned because it appears the portal might never actually function again. Uh, Slaker tweeted they'll comment on this within the coming week, and the GW community is you know, understandably concerned as you know, support for GW2 being discontinued is a possibility. Uh, however, on a more positive note, PopCap has shown they do in fact value community efforts when it comes to BFN. Uh, the list of bugs my friends and I put together in collaboration with the community in the form of posts on the Garden Office subreddit was addressed on the most recent live from PopCap stream. Uh, the trailer board has been updated accordingly and PopCap is working to fix healing not going through allied players' shields, along with various other issues the community has diligently scattered out and documented for PopCap's convenience. Uh, firstly, I am happy to see they're finally attempting to resolve bad melee hit reg. Uh, Super Brains is also vampiric. Cool. Uh, I do agree with the nerf being given to Soldier's Rapid Fire upgrade. Uh, because it used to boost your rate of fire up to a maximum of an additional 50%, which increased uh, Soldier's DPS from 67 to 100 DPS. So I'm not sad to see that go. What I am sad to see is the next patch isn't quite what the community and myself were hoping for, and I'm not confident PopCap is making the right decision by opting to neglect damage drop-off in favor of forcing players to leave their shots just a little more. I very much doubt PopCap is willing to apply this change in a drastic enough manner for it to be a viable alternative to damage drop-off, and I don't think they'll be successful in properly limiting classes to their ideal effective ranges. Uh, I believe decreased projectile velocity and drag distance would be a good addition alongside damage drop-off, as projectiles in BFN are roughly 50% faster than in previous titles. And I agree with the nearly hitscan-like speed of most bullets having their speed reduced to be in line with older games, because right now you basically just shoot lasers. I also heavily doubt the added necessity of leading your shots will be on par, let alone surpass the necessity found in GW2, and damage drop-off was still very much required in that game. I believe proof that these changes will not be implemented in a drastic enough state to be a viable alternative to damage drop-off uh, came from the developers themselves on stream, where they conceded that it will still entirely be possible to snipe a Zolstar even after the patch if you're, you know, quote-unquote, uh, really skilled. So for a character like All-Star, when those footballs get far away and they try to act like a sniper, they're, you know, it's going to be a lot harder to hit your targets. And if you're really, really skilled, you still might be able to, to do it, but you're going to have to lead your uh, targets. Mm -hmm. uh, this should go without saying, efficiently sniping outside of a weapon's effective range and breaking a class's design uh, should not be possible, regardless of your player's skill level. And I think what, you know, the conversation online from the community mostly has been around damage drop-off. And the, the team, you know, that is definitely one way to solve the problem. The way the team wanted to solve the problem is through uh, velocity and drag distance. PopCap also seems to be completely forgetting that damage drop-off not only stops players from sniping, but it also fixes issues on the reverse end. Uh, for example, Imp, uh, his close-range DPS is absolutely awful, and it doesn't justify his low health ball. Uh, Imp's all glass and no cannon. With damage drop-off, you could safely increase Imp's point-blank damage uh, without fear of him doing too well at range. This goes for classes like Scientist, Nightcap, Acorn, and, you know, some other classes to a lesser extent. These classes won't ever be balanced without damage drop-off. By PopCap refusing to implement this mechanic, it just seems like they're making more work for themselves and taking the long way around, so to speak. You know, for ultimately worse results, so it doesn't make sense to me. Equally as important, the lack of damage drop-off isn't the extent of PopCap's inability to design classes. Besides the obvious issue of All-Star being able to play outside his effective range and snipe, the necessary weaknesses of his class archetype have been completely neglected. Uh, a very important and staple mechanic tethered to slow, tanky minigun classes is the minigun spin-up mechanic to justify the very high damage output these classes tend to have at close to mid-range. Uh, spin-up is virtually non-existent for BFN All-Star, especially with the right upgrades. All-Star is less of a slow, tanky, close to mid-range defensive minigun class and more of a mobile assault rifle class, and his high damage output isn't properly justified. Your All-Star is going to be overpowered whether he can snipe or not due to his poor class design. Uh, also, Acorn still has the hardened upgrade, which was a terrible idea and never should have gotten through QA testing, 
Uh, his hitbox is very small, and it does not justify having the same health pool as Peashooter and Corn. Uh, case closed, he should not have that upgrade. The best compromise probably is just uh, the upgrade should only affect Oak, and Acorn's teaming up with an Oak, but not on the Acorn himself. This is also not to mention Nightcap was intended to be a stealth character, however her best playstyle is to abuse the parkour upgrade, to, and use her evasiveness to snipe zombies from a distance in a very unsubtle manner. Uh, even if you want to play Nightcap stealthily, you can't, because even if you manage to sneak up on an enemy, there's no actual assassination mechanic and your DPS is far too low for you to effectively assassinate someone uh, before they can react to your presence and escape. Uh, as well, classes such as Scientist, Electric Slide, Rose, Sunflower, uh, they have too much survivability. While it's definitely not a bad idea to give your support classes some means of defending themselves, uh, the on-demand invincibility these classes have is unjustifiable. Uh, warp, Arcane, and Out of Fight absolutely need some sort of telegraph or wind-up before activating, so these abilities require some forethought. Uh, Sunflower's problem is that she can sustain herself at 100% of her heal beam's effectiveness with the Blossom upgrade. Though this is less of a problem with the Blossom, and more that healing is generally too powerful in combat, and Popcap has yet to acknowledge this, which is pretty concerning. Uh, Popcap just has a terrible track record when it comes to balance. I mean, these are the same people that launched BFN with unplayably low damage, they made Parkour Nightcap, they let All-Star snipe, they gave Acorn Harden, they broke healing. You know, and most of all, these are the same people that have yet to implement drop-off into BFN. The, the, the list goes on. Uh, despite Popcap proving time and time again how incompetent they can be when it comes to balancing their games, for Popcap not only to acknowledge the community's demand for drop-off, but to then consciously choose to refuse its implementation as to say that they know better, is such a slap in the face of the community. I can only describe it as outrageous. The only cause I can pinpoint for such reluctance on Popcap's part to add drop-off is that it may complicate how some classes perform in PvE regions, which is absurd, because PvP is BFN's main attraction, and Popcap shouldn't be sacrificing the multiplayer experience for something so trivial in comparison. I believe it's time Popcap swallows their pride and starts to listen a lot closer to the community, because at this point I believe it's very fair to claim we understand the game better than Popcap. To quickly brush over team balance and lobbies, it's nice Popcap's putting an effort to ensure lobbies are fair with the, the recent patch. Unfortunately, I am very much afraid to say Popcap's efforts will ultimately be for naught if the game remains 8v8 and is not reverted back to 12v12. The absence of 8 players from casual game modes makes even the full lobbies feel like ghost towns, and one-sided matches are very common because even the slightest coordination on one team will usually be more than enough to overwhelm a team missing 4 players to help resist. Bottom line, we need 12v12 back. I believe the addition of legendary upgrades is a welcome change, uh, because they, they like variants from GW1 and 2, and I'm excited to have more weapon variations in BFN for more classes. What I find odd is that these upgrades are so expensive to equip. Uh, I almost believe you could argue these upgrades could be free uh, to equip, because they're entirely different weapons with their own downsides such as slow rate of fire, less ammo, etc and you lose out on the upgrade variation you could have otherwise had with the default weapon of the class. You know, a separate uh, weapon or variant slot could probably be added to the upgrade menu to remedy this. Also, I'm not entirely fond of how infrequent we'll be receiving these new upgrades, as, you know, we're only going to receive one every month, you know, it would seem. And that's a pretty long wait between new weapons. My only real problem with the implementation of Korn's legendary upgrade itself is the pay-to-play implications, because I do indeed consider the monetization of this upgrade in the prize map and in Rux's shop pay-to-win. Uh, the fact of the matter is, you do indeed have the option to pay real-world money to gain an advantage over other players regardless of everyone having the opportunity to obtain this upgrade for free via the prize map. You know, just a quick example, come February 1st, or a few weeks on from there, your wallet can buy you almost exclusive access to content that affects gameplay and is considered to possibly be the meta for Korn's class by the developers themselves. I like that you can still obtain this upgrade after the prize map, but you need to pay 300 rainbow stars, which is premium currency, after the fact, 
and that's the alternate means to obtain the upgrade. You're unlike Wizard, who can be earned for free through coins, which are not monetized. This is an undeniably pay-to-win aspect of BFN, simply because you can, indeed, once again, pay money to gain an advantage over other players by gaining early access to a powerful class modification, be it through purchasing bulbs for the prize map, or rainbow stars through Rux. I'm also a little wary after witnessing how criticism has been responded to by the community. A good chunk of people are choosing to take the side of a company worth a few multi-billion dollars uh, by defending this new, clearly pay-to-win aspect of BFN, which I find concerning. You know, how long until they start selling us $10-$15 uh, expansions containing these upgrades? This problem could just get worse and worse. Uh, it's times like these I value members in our community, such as Wolfie Plays, who voices his criticisms and brings attention to community concerns. Uh, on stream, it was said of Ranked Battle Arena will have end of season rewards, which is great. I really want Ranked Battle Arena to take off, I think it'll be very fun, and proper incentives such as rewards for being high rank seems like a great way to populate the game mode. Uh, with PopCap's interest in this competitive mode peaking, I believe it's time uh, PopCap adds official support for an FOV slider. PopCap's main reasoning for being reluctant for adding this feature is that it will affect how players perform. The only problem is, players are already able to change their FOV to their personal preference on PC by accessing their settings file. Adjusting your FOV is just that, personal preference, not some sort of unfair means of enhancing personal performance, and in fact, not supporting an FOV slider in-game is far more unfair to those unaware of the feature, and it could be argued that those who indeed do know have an unfair advantage. But you see, if everyone can easily change their FOV, then there's no problem. Yeah, even major shooters in esports allow for players to customize their FOV with no problems. BFN has no reason to be different or fear this change, harming its competitive environment. Uh, as for the new content, I'll go over it quickly. Uh, the new turf map, Preserve Pastures. Very visually pleasing map. Reminds me of uh, Robotica Farms from Spyro 2, Ripto's Rage. Judging from what we saw on stream, this map doesn't look good from a gameplay perspective. Uh, it's very open, and the defending team has an extreme height advantage at some points. Of course, this is just speculation, we'll have to see for ourselves. Uh, Wizard looks cool. His team up mechanic seems interesting. I'm a little disappointed they're not releasing a new plant class alongside him, which I believe is a bad omen. And you know, it could easily lead people to believe new content will be scarce and slowly trickled into BFN over the coming months, which may cause players to lose interest. And that's about it for now. Thanks for listening. Uh, you know, hope uh, you took something away from this. Later.